today and welcome to the Jade Rat. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've had a wonderful new year and a safe and joyous holiday season. Of course here in Australia it's been crazy um, but we're all good and hopefully things will be getting better soon. Um, but today I'd like to talk to you about Night Child. Um, I did a review for the first two books of this series a while ago um, and I finished this just before uh, the new year and it is uh, by James Barkley and it is in the Chronicles of Raven uh, trilogy. It is the last book in the trilogy and the other two books are over there um, as you can see. And I'd have to give it a 70%. Now, the reason why I've given it 70% is because of a couple of things. Now, the story is centered around the same characters, uh, predominantly the same cast of characters, the, the Raven. It once again focuses on that ensemble piece. However, Unlike the other two books up there, uh, this book essentially occurs five years after the end of the second. And as a result of that, there's a lot of catching up to do. There's a, a bit of a gap in, in the story and... Hang on a minute. Editing Jaya here. I just realised that I didn't explain the plot of the book to you. So here it is. Essentially, uh, the Night Child is the daughter of two mages who come from two different magic streams. Uh, as a result of that, um, the child is born with is born with like a new magic, and that new magic is actually the original magic that the four colleges uh, branched off from. So essentially, it's it's combining again. And it's immensely powerful. Uh, what happens uh, to every mage in sort of in this law is that they go through what they call is a knight, and that knight is like like a magical spiritual experience in which they have to um, go through and accept the magic into their bodies. Uh, if they don't accept it, uh, they will die. And if they do accept it, then they can now use and employ uh, magic. So essentially it follows uh, trying to control this girl's uh, knight. And she's five years old and they try and control her knight as, uh, as a result of the, the old magic returning. And it's very powerful and they have to find a way to get her to accept the magic without... I mean, without her unintentionally destroying the rest of the world. As a result of that, the first hundred or so pages, even the first 200 pages, can be a little bit slow and boring. If it wasn't for the last maybe 150 pages of the book, uh, it'd, be, it'd be pretty boring. Um, the characters, for the most part, are the same. And there's some development, but they don't really address it in the... In the book about what's been happening for the last five years and it's not really filled in um, and we are dealing with the same characters again but we don't have that sort of satisfying ending that we had in the first two so uh, in Dawn Thief the uh, final sort of challenge that the people faced characters faced was resolved and it was it was solved and we were pretty much happy with the result of it. it the rest of the world and that fictional setting was sort of completed in that time and then as the second one went on it, it was sort of uh, occurring pretty much immediately after and there were repercussions to the first one that we weren't aware about and then they were solved and everything was good. So for this one, they had to introduce a 
problem, which was obviously related to the time that had passed. It was related to um, the night child. And they didn't create a, an ending that sort of satisfied, that sort of closed off all of these little strands of stories. Um, in the sense that as the characters sort of uh, left after the second book, they went on to do their own little lives and you know, some people went in one direction and the others had their own personal things and some decided to start a family. And these uh, sort of loose ends weren't tied up at the end of this novel. And I think that that was one of the biggest drawbacks because, uh, quite frankly, the plot I wasn't that invested in. I was more interested to see how other characters would resolve their issues as a result of solving the main issue. And unfortunately, the ending didn't uh, sort of live up to that, but it was still a pretty good ending. In the end, the world was saved, but I would have liked a little bit more information. The characters uh, that I think were the major drawback in this novel, um, for me personally, was the fact that the characters in this novel, or the main central focus, was on my least favourite character of the Raven. So of the original uh, seven that started off, uh, the the main one that this story focuses on, or the main two, um, one is actually one of my favourites and the other is my least favourite of the lot. Um, that's not to say that that character isn't great. Um, they're, they're a good character and it's it's okay, but still they I found them to be the most bland. Um, and that was another drawback, but otherwise it's a good story. It's as befitting of like a third book, right, in the last in the trilogy. You do need to have context. So you can't read it by yourself um, as a standalone. You do need to know uh, previous plot points in order to make this one really strong. So one of the things that I really liked about this book um, and it sort of carries through for what I enjoyed in the first two was the magic system and then they elaborated more on the magic system as as we've gone through. So in the first book we, we sort of were introduced to it and that sort of um, academic approach to magic and then the second one goes on to deal with a particular facet of that magic so a dimensions and and uh, portals and moving through moving magic through one place and another but this one uh, adds to the magic once more so it it's it's probably the best part of this book is that the magic in it uh, is is in the sense it's expanded upon by going backwards in time so instead of discovering something new instead of creating something new which is what they did in the first two they they created a new uh, spell or they they went and looked for a spell and they created the solution to the consequences of that spell in this one the aim is to go back to how it originally was so magic um, just like sort of schools of philosophy or mathematics, how they have a root point and then they branch off into your own philosophies or your own ideals. Um, we're actually going back to the source. And that was one of the most interesting parts of the book. And it's probably what gave the ending such an impactful meaning. If, if it wasn't related to the, the magic, it wouldn't be as interesting. It w I would have probably given it a much lower score. So the magic in this system, and I think James Barclay does a really good job of sort of creating this intricate magic system. And, and there are people, especially in this one, uh, that focus on 
the dangers of magic and how sort of average people look at those that have the ability to do magic. So it's a lot more um, interesting and sort of in a way political and how magic is, is viewed and and how it's seen not only within the four schools of magic but also uh, by everybody else. We also do have a the return of a character that was I, I thought was one of the better characters of the series who um, unfortunately did not play as big of a role in uh, the second book um, but in this one that character makes a return not as uh, as well as I would like but they were there and I was really happy that they were uh, it was sort of like if you're watching an, a Justice League or an Avengers movie and you're missing out on one of the main characters it feels a bit empty so when finally we were joined up with this character again as that all scattered and then slowly reunited it, it was it was great to see um, this particular character come back and uh, come back in a number of ways but still not completely which is I think really good to leave up further avenues to explore and once again it's related to magic to see you know how far the consequences of this magic goes and as I said earlier it, it is related to um, previous plot points and I think one of them that is really important is going back and addressing the sort of problems and trauma that one of the main characters had and it was glossed over in the first two books well we saw it happen in the first book and then it was sort of glossed over and then uh, and then they didn't really care about it until now and then there was a point where it wasn't as addressed and then all of a sudden you're like oh remember how this happened and then now this character's pretty much traumatized from it and it was uh, i think it was really good to bring that back because uh, I know that if something similar had occurred to people that I knew or even myself, I would not have uh, taken it as lightly as the character did. And to see that there were some real world sort of reactions and repercussions for these injustices that were done onto them in the first book, to see it actually have a, have a meaningful impact sort of you know drilled it in and made it more convincing and made it made it feel real and created a, a stronger connection with the characters who I admittedly didn't like as much largely because of the fact that they didn't really address this problem in the first two books so now when it was addressed again I was like okay and now I don't dislike them that much as a result of that, the villains, or the uh, antagonists, and they come back. They come back to um, bite them, and, and it sort of furthers this traumatic experience because uh, the character has gone through it once, and now there's a risk of them going through it again. So that was really good, and. Once again, I would recommend this to people who like fantasy and like fantasy that's not necessarily centered around young people. A lot of, of course, young adult novels that sort of focus around a younger demographic. And then once you've gone past that stage, they're like, okay, well, you know, I can't really connect to these characters as much as I used to. So, um,. James Barclay's Nightchild is pretty good, 70%. Could be better, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. And uh, I would recommend it if you like fantasy. It's pretty good, pretty fun. Um, thank you so much for watching. I, I'll i try and make these a bit more regular this year, hopefully. 
that's about it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.